A lot of you guys are super ambitious and that's great. But here's the thing, if you've got extraordinary goals, you're gonna need to do extraordinary things. And let's be real, making a full-time living from audio is hard. You're gonna have to work harder to make it happen than someone who works for the state government or whatever. You keep saying you want it. So ask yourself this, do your actions align with your words? You might say you want it. It being a record deal, a production career, a date with that girl, a million dollars, or really anything. And if I sat in conversation with you and listened to you, the words you used might even convince me that you were being serious. But are your actions actually congruent with what you say your goals are? Because if they're not, you're just talking. The lies you tell yourself and the people around you will just become the narrative. And whether or not any of these things are true will become irrelevant. I'm not trying to tell you this is some dire warning or to sound some alarm. In fact, I'm just saying it because it's super common. Want to know why most people never achieve their life goals and dreams? In my opinion, it's because they are more in love with the idea of their dream than their actual dream, and that's completely understandable. To actually want your dream to come true, you have to invest a level of sacrifice that most sane people would just not be willing to put themselves through. It's way easier and more comfortable to just tell yourself you want to quit your day job than to work nights and weekends for years while sacrificing relationships up until the point where quitting your job is even a moderate risk. Movies, biographical shows, and even interviews make this even worse because they make it seem like the success they're describing is so much easier one than it actually was. The inherent time compression found in biographical movies can make 10 years of sacrifice and pain seem like a three minute zany montage. They glamorize something that has no glamor in it. And when great people get interviewed about what they did, oftentimes they will make it sound easier than it was so that they seem more superhuman than they actually are. You don't get to see the psychological damage of day in day out living with the results of alienated loved ones. They can't properly portray the declining health caused by several years of all nighters combined with a generally unhealthy intake of food and possibly substances. This is not meant to discourage you. If anything, I'm just trying to illuminate the fact that nobody outside of yourself can define or decide what level of sacrifice you're willing to make for your dreams. But if you use other people as the gauge, you might be misled as to what it actually takes to level up your goals in a meaningful way. Here's an example from my life. Let's take it back about 15 years. My top goal for my 20s was to get my extreme metal band signed to Roadrunner Records. I wanted to skip the small underground labels and go straight to the top. I knew this was a completely unrealistic goal, but I wanted it. I mean, I really fucking wanted it. How do I know that I really wanted it? Well, here's what I did to make it happen. In the early 2000s, the criteria for landing yourself a record deal with a decent sized label was number one, you could and would tour with or without tour support. Touring was the number one driver of record sales besides radio. Number two, an established base of independent sales. This way your label could convince distributors to put you in stores and you could convince a label that you were worth the investment. Number three, buzz. This way your label would have a much easier time getting PR for your new band and selling you to radio. Yes, selling. In order to get that record deal, you had to convince or show the label that all of the above were taken care of or would easily be taken care of. I knew that if I really wanted that Roadrunner Records deal for my unknown local death metal band, that I had to create a believable reality in all three categories first, and that was no small task for a nobody. In my research, I found out that the band Disturbed had passed out approximately 200,000 copies of their demos when they were trying to get signed. I figured that if a major league band going for a major league label had to hand out 200,000 demos, that I would need to pass out at least 10,000 demos. No big deal, right? Well, let's keep in mind that I couldn't just pay to get 10,000 CDs printed. I wish I could have, but it was not in the cards. What's that saying? A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step? For me, that single step was to start burning those demos in the CD-ROM drive on my computer. And when they were burned, I would print a label to my dot matrix printer and affix it to the CD. At around 45 minutes per demo, I could get approximately 10 to 12 done per night before exhaustion took over. Keep in mind that I also had to earn money to live, practice guitar so I could keep up, write music, practice with the band, spend at least one day every two weeks with my girlfriend so she wouldn't hate me, and somehow keep researching the other things I had to do to promote the band, and then actually do them. Things got easier when I bought a 4X CD burner that now had two drives. 
Now I could burn a print around 20 at night. Hell yeah, right? That's almost double speed. Now I was cooking with gas. Let's do the math. I didn't have to hand out 200,000 demos before I got signed. I got 25,000 done and then the record deal happened. At an average of 20 CDs burned per night, it would take approximately 1,250 days to burn 25,000 CDs. That's approximately three and a half years with no days off. And of course, I had to take days off. We had to play shows and record and maybe spend some time with our friends, family, and significant others. Oh yeah, I forgot. What about actually handing these CDs out? Just printing them was one thing, but they weren't meant to just make my basement look like an episode of Hoarders Local Band Edition. I handed these out everywhere. No exaggeration. I once flew to England with a thousand CDs to hand them out in the parking lot of a Cannibal Corpse show. Another time I drove 13 hours to the 2004 Maryland Death Fest to hand out 2,000 CDs. Believe me, I did not drive up there to see Gore Guts. Any time a metal show came through Atlanta, I would show up with a backpack full of CDs and unleash them on the crowd. I figured that half of them ended up in the trash or thrown out the windows of cars, so I made up for it by overwhelming with volume. I'm not telling any of this to brag or pat myself on the back, merely to illustrate that to pull off any sort of lofty goal, it's gonna be a multifaceted, coordinated, multi-year effort, and you're gonna to need to be pushing on the gas the whole time. Anyways, back to the story. The CDs helped establish a buzz, a base of independent sales and markets to tour to. But what about the actual touring? You also had to do a ton of that as an unsigned artist in order to have anyone take you seriously. In my mind, one independently booked regional tour was as good as 100 local shows. One independently booked semi-national tour was as good as 1,000 local shows. And one independently booked overseas tour, well, that was priceless and therefore my main goal. Funny stat, my band played more shows locally after we were signed than before. And it's because I knew that the local shows were basically worthless. Getting this momentum started wasn't as hard as I thought because not only had I already begun handing out the demos all over the region and people had heard of us, but I had the ultimate leverage tool, my studio. I started by offering really great studio deals to bands that lived within a six hour radius from me. Once I got them in the studio, I would convince them to let my band play their town. After doing this for a couple of years, I was able to string these sounds together into mini tours. We would make a point of going on these mini tours at least tw twice per month for well over a year. Sounds fun, right? Kind of was, but it was also brutal because we didn't even own a van yet. We used our drummer's pickup truck and took turns between one person sleeping across the back seat bench and the rest of us cramped up at the front. While simultaneously burning and passing out demos 24 seven, touring at least twice a month, practicing my instrument and recording professionally in my studio, I was also researching PR opportunities and overseas tour opportunities. Through the relentless touring and CD bombardments, I found a regional music magazine that let me take out full page ads on a monthly basis. This connected us to more bands and venues we could tour with. Eventually, I also found a promoter in England willing to book a UK tour for us. There's way more to this story, but for the sake of brevity, I will say that it was all starting to come together. A combination of the years-long CD tsunami, relentless regional touring, thousands of dollars spent on press, and the investment in an overseas tour worked synergistically to get us noticed by Monty Connor at Roadrunner. What it took to turn that attention into a deal is a whole other crazy story, but to just get to that point took a gargantuan effort, and I would do it again if the goal was important enough, because that's what it takes. So, how bad do you really want it? Are you out working the other guy trying to eat your lunch? Always ask yourself, could I do more? You really have to stop at nothing. Would you drive six hours to see a band you wanna work with? Will you stay at 42 hours to finish a mix? Are you willing to manually align every snare hit because it sounds 2% better? How about ghost mix an entire album for someone because you wanna get your foot in the door? Or sleep on the floor of your studio for a year so you don't have to get a day job? Yes, it's hard to get here, but it's so fucking worth it once you do it. Do what other people won't for a couple years so for the rest of your life you can do what other people can't. It's a quote I really like. Hard work always pays off. So if you really want this, keep your nose to the grindstone and don't look up until you cross the finish line. All right, questions and actions. Write down your goals. Now write down what actions you're taking currently to reach those goals. Are they aligned? What's one extraordinary thing that you could do to get closer to your goals? Write it down and give yourself a deadline for actually doing it. Have you ever done something extraordinary to accomplish a goal? Write down what it was, 
pat yourself on the back and then get on with it because that type of effort is the habit you're gonna need to create if you want your most outlandish goals to come true. I'm Ayal Levy, this is The Career Builder Show. Thank you for watching.